Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Damn Good Brains channel. I have not posted in a while, but that's all good. We're gonna just uh, just keep going like nothing ever happened. So today I'm going to be uh, walking through the process that I took to create this um, recreation of a classic magic card, uh, Umazawa's Jit. And I'm just basically gonna talk you guys through the process of how I came up with the idea and um, the steps I took to, to make it. So um, yeah, just sort of diving in here, let me see. Um. So I had started by gathering a few reference images. I have two of the original images of Umazawa's Jit from Magic the Gathering from the cards. They're both completely different in design, so I figured that a completely unique design for this would, would be acceptable since there's no real canon and how it looks unless the books describe it in a certain way um, but the uh, the judge promo art which you can see behind the original art here the blue image behind that one this one right here that one is um, that's a completely different looking jet so <laughs> I just decided you know I'd sketch out the, the general shape of it uh, using just shapes in Illustrator uh, and get a feel for it and then make some decisions about what the design would be as I was as I was building it out. So this is just all real time design and decision making. And then I'm looking at the, the, the design of the um, two to my right, as well as a, a, a real picture of like a, a, a picture of real JITs. Um, I believe they're real. It just looks like they're Photoshopped. If not, they're good 3D renders. They're close enough that they sort of uh, give me a full on a unblocked image of what the JITs look like because they, uh, Jits are in the Umazawa's hand in both of those pictures. So, uh, yeah, I'm basically just building up the hilt using rectangles pretty much exclusively at this point, and then um, rounding the corners using the corners tool. Um, here I was coming up with some way to create the effect of like a wrapped, um, like a wrapped leather around the handle and what I was having trouble with there was getting them to line up perfectly along their line so I just decided to do rectangles again duplicated it down copy paste duplicated it down then I uh, I divided the top layer of the original handle with the uh, the new pattern that I had created and um, rounded those corners and it gave me a really cool like wrapped leather effect uh, I, well, as I was doing this I made sure to copy and paste when I could remember so I could uh, duplicate things. I was just straight duplicate the design in case I want to go back and change something later. Uh, it's a great it's a great little trick to just always have um, the, the original design or the design before it in some variation not too far from where you're at um, for you know quick quick reference and, and to you know explore alternatives from the source. So a lot of the times I'll keep going forward but I'll also you know look back on what I've done and see if there was something in the beginning that was maybe simpler or maybe the combining elements from different areas. I don't really do that too much here, but uh, I spent a little time exploring what the uh, the handle wraps might look like if they were uh, instead of diagonal uh, horizontal and also did like a double overlap and I just was like getting carried away with that so I moved on. One of the biggest things here was to really focus on continuous momentum forward and to keep making changes. I definitely started to drag on around the list for probably like the last four, 20 minutes or so uh, of working on this project, I really did start to uh, fade a bit. So this is uh, this is early on when I was eager and ready to go. So just sort of you know moving this stuff out of the way and then making just some decisions. Uh, at this point, I was thinking about colors. I, I originally thought oh, I'll just pull from the original color palettes and see how that looks, but then. Uh, I just thought everything looked so chromatic and I wanted to do something that was more earthy. Um, so you'll see here like this is very dark, dark handle and it's just so it's like silver and grays for the uh, the metal bits and then I wanted to like try and create like a gold gold hilt. Uh, and essentially decided this was all very dark. Um, you also see here that I explored um, a more dramatic gray style color palette. Uh, gradient style color palette um, and as much as I love that look I wanted it to be really just simple and flat so um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this up here a little bit and 
uh, I just tend to, to get like a little nitpicky in here. I make decision like a lot less decisions at this point. Basically I'm thinking to myself, this is maybe starting to look too much like it's Arabic inspired rather than Japanese inspired. So I back it up and I start over again. So yeah, thinking through this through, um, just a lot of decision making happening all at once. And then, um, trying to figure out what the gradients should be, how far I should push them. This took me a while to figure out how to get this uh, angle correct. I wanted it to be repeated. There we go, I started to figure it out. And <laughs> like, I liked how this looked. I saved a duplicated version of it, but um, I started playing with multiple layers and doing multiplies and overlay uh, on top of the other layers. And really it was acting as a detriment to the overall design of the JIT. Um, so. I decided to, you know, one of the things I kept telling myself was that just to keep it simple and to, you know, make a nice design and not to over illustrate it. Um, so you see me here trying to get this thing to split correctly. Uh, and I just spent so much, so much time doing that because I was just working too far zoomed out. And, you know, that's just something I was just in bad, in a bad setup for that. I should have uh, been a bit closer in here, but I was also trying to maintain a, uh, you know, a high level view. So I didn't get into those nitty gritty details. So I was fighting myself a lot with this, um, the back and forth, the push and pull um, of wanting to do a really amazing job, make something really cool, but also trying to keep it simple um, so I could get it done. Uh, I could have spent hours on this and then I tend to, you know, push into burnout if I go too long. So avoiding burnout is really, um, I think the core at the core of this whole design, try to get something cool done. I mean, I know I could push it further, but um, asking myself, can it work in just a, a simple color palette, very muted, uh, lots of earth tones. So here again, I'm just overthinking things. I'm thinking about the design of the actual jit itself. And it's, um, I'm like, okay, let's, t let's focus on colors. What's gonna be a good background color for this. And then once I so I made that decision to go all earth tones. Um, I dropped this to a dark green so the gold and browns would uh, read well and contrast nicely. And then I worked on some spacing, tried to figure out what to do if I was gonna do these um, these outlines on everything. So that was a decision that took me a bit of time figuring out the the outline widths. And then, um, you know, at this point I was basically done, but I was like, ah, I needed to, needed to have a bit more. So I was uh, thinking about some, some ribbons or some, I guess, yeah, this is this is essentially a, a wrapped cloth around the uh, the top hilt of the blade. And you'll see, I've kind of pulled this idea from the uh, the Judge Promo's design. Uh, and I spent way too much time trying to figure this out. This shouldn't have been so complicated, but essentially I just needed to take this shape, put it over top and then um, around the corners. But I kept trying to like divide it and add separate, um, create separate elements, but then I realized they were too short. So I knew, I knew from the get-go I was doing this wrong and I still spent way too much time on it. Um, so it was also too tall, shortened it, and then I thought maybe, you know, pulling it out so it has some uh, dramatic depth, that's, but it's also very 2D. Um, and then I eventually pull that back so it can be a, a more um, cohesive design and sit and, and live by itself. It won't feel so married to the, the page um, con constraints because right now it feels like the whole thing is an image when really I thought maybe it'd be just cool if they the weapon could stand on its own. So um, shortly after figuring out like what this should look like, um, I start to look at typography too, which will be coming up here soon. But it's um, it's really just me experimenting with these colors and trying to figure out like, should I go like with a Japanese sun? That's not really Kamigawa though. Uh, and then trying to you know, remove my own biases and my own thinking of the, of the Japanese culture and instead try to just focus on the uh, the magic gathering weapon. So uh, I tried a number of different circles here, trying not to make it like a literal Japanese reference, like I just said. And uh, then I just kept thinking to myself, well, maybe this doesn't need to be so zigzaggy. Maybe this should be more of a uh, a flat, um, boring element. Maybe it should just like be a uh, something that sticks off. And then uh, I decided maybe it should have uh, you know that ge a much more geometric approach to it, where it feels like a uh, a design element coming off and that looked cool too but it also didn't really make sense at the, the top of the hilt where it is here is more along the blade because there's no uh, there's no rope 
at this part so then I would have had to design that and then it was just getting too much complicated so it's too complicated so you see I actually try to move it up try to make it sense up there and eventually I just end up going back to what I originally had and creating a bit more overlap over top of the uh, the gold part of the hilt there so a lot of experimenting and I'm speeding up here quickly just to kind of show that uh, you know I, I tried a different couple different things and I ultimately just went back to what I thought worked and then moved it to create some uh, some implied overlaps but still in a 2d design and then I just was really not sure what this should do I'm still not like in love with the way it turned out but I mean it's because it's so different compared to the flat nature of this the the weapon itself these are sort of like coming out and have perspective to them unlike the other ones so that's something I think I would probably try to change again now that have I've had the chance to review it in my mind so I'm here I'm looking at Ulbra Sands type which is just it's nice it's got a it's got a uh, you know an eastern feel to it but not really it's not too um, on the nose or anything and certainly not uh, a, a cliche type font like a brush script or something like that um, here I just flattened the entire design to one color and then I had the outline still on some elements and it was just becoming really cumbersome to try and design essentially it's a redesign at that point when it becomes one color but I kind of like this how this looks here on the right the red and gold uh, and then um, I had uh, decided to you know, use Kamigawa and the set symbol in there somehow so I could push it a bit further. I kind of liked how this looked, this little set, this little lock up right here. You see me try that out a few times. Two different typefaces. The other typeface is Coco Goose Pro, which is something I use in a lot of logos and design because it's really nice. It's a nice geometric font. Um, so this, yeah, again, I went back to this circle design again. Um, just hadn't really learned my lesson, I guess. And then just, just working on like a seal element. And this was cool, but I felt like it had just obstructed from the design of the the weapon. And I was like, what am I really doing here? Am I making like a graphic design piece or am I illustrating a weapon? And uh, ultimately it is both. But um, when, because I got the design of the weapon done so fast, I figured I'd probably should push it in some way and, you know, add, add elements where I could. So I just keep kept trying stuff like try it without the the name Kamigawa and then um, with just a set symbol. So uh, yeah, ultimately here you'll see me go back to my original design. And uh, I also pulled my color palette out and tried to add those design elements uh, as well. You'll see me build out these final three colored circle, circles at the bottom um, and then try to use them in some way. I just kind of stick them in the bottom right hand corner and not sure what that was going to do. but. Um, sometimes that stuff can be fun because it just shows that there's a, uh, a it's a deliberately designed thing but ultimately didn't like it I just realized right now when I pulled that um, duplicated this jit uh, to, to make it real small I forgot the the base of the hilt with the the, uh, the diamonds in it so that's pretty funny I just kind of grabbed it really quickly but it does work as an even simplified version um, you can see I even get rid of the uh, the ribbon there, so or the rope, or whatever we want to call it. So, I think this design works really well, very small and simplified. So that's pretty cool. So for that purpose of like having a a very like a three D design look with gradients to a very flat design to a minimalist design, one color, uh, I think it was a successful redesign of the jet, and it was pretty fun. So uh, yeah, I'm just uh, sitting here, and I realized um, the. Uh, the design of this, the final piece of this has been um, incorrectly attributed to just the Kamigawa set. So you'll see here at the end, um, I don't have footage of it because that was like a quick swap out I did. I uh, redesigned the Kamigawa bit to be Betrayers of Kamigawa and uh, I added in the uh, the proper set symbol behind the, the, the JIT. So you'll see that coming up here and uh, it's just a, a silly little thing that I didn't really think about until I posted it. Actually, I posted it to Twitter, and I was like, "Oh wait, okay, uh, I knew this is wrong." <laughs> so that always happens. It's a great way to uh, find my mistakes. It's just to do something, and then I post it, and I realize all the things I did wrong. So uh, that's it for this video, and I, uh, I hope you guys will uh, come check me out on the next one. I want to do a lot more Magic the Gathering inspired weapons and artifacts, and uh, you know, eventually branch out and illustrate other things that. 
I'm passionate about just always looking to keep it interesting so I might alternate between this and another s series or movie or something uh, just really whatever inspires me or if you have any other question uh, suggestions on what you'd like to me to see me illustrate uh, drop them in the comments I'd be happy to think about them and think about a fun way to uh, to incorporate them into a design and make a video about that all right thank you so much for uh, checking out the channel and watching all the way to the end you are the best